بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعده. So we'll continue tonight with the book Men Wasaya, Salaf the Shabab, Advice from the Salaf to the Youth, which is to stop wasting time, and the majority of the book is discussing uh, a person preserving their time and taking care of their time and not wasting time, especially those uh, what we call the youthful days or the youthful years. And most of the encouragement is to take advantage of that specific time of your life for all of us so that we don't look back and regret not taking advantage of our, <clears throat> of our time. Specifically, what it said, it said the youth, but the youth doesn't and isn't restricted to, as it's gonna show in some of these narrations, is not restricted to kids or teenagers or something like that, which we might think initially when we hear the word youth. But a shab in the Arabic language could reach up to the age of 40. A youth in Arabic, that word can reach the limit to the age of 40, and some say past the age of 40. To still be, to still be considered in, or a person is in their younger years during that time. So Shaykh Abdul Razak Hafidullah, and we stopped last week on Al-Wasiyya, Al-Rabi'ah, the fourth piece of advice, and now we start with the fifth piece of advice, Al-Wasiyya, Al-Khamisa. And he says, وَمِنْ وَصَائِحْ أَسْتَلَفْ لِلشَّبَابِ رَحِمَهُمَ اللَّهِ مَا وَرَدَ عَنْ الْحَسَنَ الْبَصْرِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ كَثِيرًا مَا كَانَ يَقُولُ uh, another piece of advice which is narrated or related by uh, Imam Hassan al-Basri. If we don't know who al-Hassan al-Basri is, this is another name because this book is filled with names of scholars and famous imams of the past giving advice to those uh, who, are, who they came across. So it's important to know who the people are so, we, so that we know what makes their statement relevant? What makes it important, or what makes their statement important that we give any type of attention to it uh, a thousand years later? So he said that Hassan al Basri, which is another name that we should know, or Allah, he will often say, Ya Ma'ashar al Shabbat, when he would. Address uh, the youth, or when he would advise someone, he would say, "Alaykum bil akhira fatlubuha." It is upon you to seek the hereafter. Make sure that you're working and doing something for your hereafter. Yani, good deeds and obedience to Allah. Make sure that you're doing something for the hereafter. This is what is important for you. And then he said. فَكَثِيرًا رَأَيْنَا مَنْ طَلَبَ الْآخِرَةَ فَأَدْرَكَ مَعْ أَدْرَكَهَا مَعْ الدُّنْيَا He said, we saw plenty of people, plenty of people that we've seen, they have, they strive to please Allah, and they strive to build something for the hereafter, for the akhirah, and in the process of doing that, that Allah blessed them with the dunya. Allah gave them the best of this world, along with them striving for the hereafter. And then he said, وَمَا رَعِيْنَا مَا رَعِيْنَا أَحَدًا طَلَبَ الدُّنْيَا فَأَدْرَكَ الْآخِرَ مَعَ الدُّنْيَا He said, but we haven't seen anyone, we haven't seen anyone who made their sole purpose this world only. They were seeking this world and everything in this world and they lost sight and they lost focus of the hereafter. He said, we haven't seen anyone who sought after this world. They're trying to get everything in the dunya, and along with them getting everything in the dunya, since that was their goal, we haven't seen anyone along with that, that they protected and preserved their hereafter, that they put up anything for their hereafter. And this effort has to be understood, and he says that this is an important 
tanbih that uh, Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah is drawing attention because this is, this is important that a person makes their most what is the most important thing to him is the hair that we don't get caught in making this world which we're not we won't be here permanently that we all have a specific designated time that we don't make this world the most important thing to us we don't make clothing the most important thing to us we don't make money the most important thing to us we don't make women and the women don't make men that you don't make your spouses or your children or anything from the dunya the most important thing and it doesn't mean that these things are not important or not very important but but they're all from the dunya and every single thing will pass away every person and everyone will pass but the dunya and the dunya will pass and then we have to move on to the after therefore he says this is important for a person not to make uh, dunya, this world, the most important thing. But they have to make the most important thing the hereafter, and they have to be diligent and striving for the hereafter and busy in themselves in their time. And a person should busy themselves with something that is going to get them closer to their Lord. This is what is important. He says, If a person does that, and a person is obedient, then Allah Jalla will give them the dunya. They will give, he will give them what they want from this world. But that is not the goal. The goal shouldn't be uh, this world alone. And it doesn't mean, as he's going to mention, that And it doesn't mean, this is what it is. he's not saying, and the narration doesn't mean that a person uh, doesn't work and do what they need to do and take the things that they need, right, from this world in order to live. Doesn't mean a person doesn't get married and they don't love their spouse, they don't love their wife, and the wife doesn't love their husband, they don't love their children. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean a person doesn't work and they buy things and they buy clothes that you need and a person likes to have nice things. It doesn't mean any of that because a person may understand that if only thing, if we're only working for the, if we're not supposed to, indulge and be caught up in the dunya, then that means we just sit around method and we don't work and we don't do anything, which which is another extreme because at that point a person becomes a burden on somebody else. At that point now you're a burden on somebody else because somebody else has to take care of that person. So he says that a person that a person doesn't become a burden on other people, but he says, Bal la yadur al Muslim an yamala wa yakdah wa yihasil al ma'al walo asban ma in dahu kithir. It's nothing wrong with a Muslim working. I don't know where people get that mindset from that it's a problem with Muslims working. There's nothing wrong with working. He says, There's nothing wrong with saving money. Even if that money becomes a lot of money, there's no problem with that. The problem is when that is the sole intention, best, and a person forgets the reality. And this is why I said, لَكِنْ الَّذِي يَدُرُّهُ أَنْ تَكُنَّ الدُّنْيَا هَمَّهُ What does harm a person is that this world becomes the most important thing to them. It's become the most important thing to them. Everything that they learn is connected to the dunya. Everything is about getting further in the dunya. And then they forget they forget about, they forget about the hereafter when we have to stand before Allah, and all we have is our deeds, our deeds. So he says, this is why the Messenger, he used to always make the du'a, 
أنه كان يقول في دعائه that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to say in the dua which is in the Sunnah of Imam Tirmidhi Jami Tirmidhi where he says the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to say ولا تجع الدنيا أكبر همنا and do not make this world our most important the most important thing to us and when we talk about dunya it has to be understood everything 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 from that we need even though it's we need it it's considered to be from the dunya so we need vehicles to get back and forth and to do things to go to the market and to do the necessities we need to do but it's still a car is from the dunya all right, clothing. We need clothing to cover our odor and to cover ourselves. There's nothing wrong with nice clothing, but the reality is, it's from the dunya. Right? Marriage, enjoying a spouse, is from the dunya. That all of these things are not the most important, even though they're needed, and even though it is a, uh, it's a, it's a need, and if some things are higher than the need, a must. Right? Even though there some things reach a high level, necessity, that those things are still part of the dunya and the Prophet used to make a dua that don't make those things, don't make the dunya the most important thing to us. Don't make that our most important thing that we give all of our attention to worldly gains, that we give further in the dunya, but we don't give any attention to our akhirah. That we don't give any attention to our akhirah which we're going to need. He said after that, that the Messenger والسلام, also said, إِنَّكَ أَنْ تَذَرْ وَرَثَتَكَ أَذْنِيَاءَ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَنْ تَذَرَهُمْ عَالَةً تَكَفَّفُونَ الْنَاسِ And he said another hadith, that it's better that you leave your inheritors with some type of wealth. That's better than to leave them dependent on other people after we die. It's better to leave something behind so that we don't have to, or the people that we leave behind when we die don't have to stick their hand out and ask other people, or even depend on other people, as the Prophet says. So that we don't have to depend on other people. And that hadith is in Sahih Bukhari. So he says after that, Shaykh Abdul Razak, فَمَنْ جَعْلَ هَمَّهُ الْآخِرَةَ جَمْعَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الشَّمْلَةَ وَأَتَتْهُ الدُّنْيَا وَهِيَ الرَّاضِمَةَ Whoever makes their intention and they make the most important thing to them gathering or preparing for the hereafter, that Allah will give them the dunya. Allah will give them this life from what he sees. And he says, even if a person doesn't desire things from this life, that they will, Allah will give it to them. As opposed to the other person who makes the dunya the most important thing to them, then they will only get, and either way we have to remember, if we spend our days and nights if we spend our days and nights, and we go, and there's nothing wrong with it, but we're making a point. If we spend our days and nights working, that we're only going to get exactly what Allah decreed for us to get. Which doesn't mean we don't work. It doesn't mean we don't work. But it means we have to be balanced. We have to be balanced. There has to be a time for all of us. We have to make time to make sure we are preparing for the Akhirah that we're preparing for the Akhirah. So he says that the person who puts the hereafter first, then Allah will give him from the dunya what he wills, and the person who puts the dunya first, then they will constantly see that they're not getting ahead, as we say. It never works out. And of course, at the end of the day, they're only gonna get, we only get what Allah decreed for us. Tayyip, he says, Al-Wasiyah Sadisa. Al-Wasiyah to Sadisa, the six piece of advice. Uh, is recorded by Ibn Abi Dunya. And Maja an Urqba Ibn Abi Hakim. Qala kunna najlisu ila Aoun Ibn Abdullah. Aoun Ibn Abdullah. Two names here, Urba ibn Abi Hakim wa Aum ibn Abdullah. So Urba said, we used to sit with, we used to sit with Aum ibn Abdullah. 
We used to sit with Aum ibn Abdullah. فيقول لنا, so Aum used to say to us, this is the advice he used to give, he used to say to us, Ma'ashar al-Shabaab, Qad ra'ina al-Shabaab yamutun. فَمَا يُنْتَظَرُ بِالْحَصَادِ إِذَا بَلَغَتْ مِنْ وَيَمَسْ وَيَمَسْ لِحْجَتَ He was rubbing his beard and he said to him, uh, Oh youth, I see, we've seen a bunch of, uh, of the youth die, a bunch of young people have died. So don't wait. فَمَا يُنْتَظَرُ بِالْحَصَادِ إِذَا بَلَغَتْ مِنْ He makes a statement here regarding uh, comparing death coming to gardening planting seeds and when the, the crops grow. is a certain time that when the crops grow, as he says here, Maradu Rahim Allah, and the Mandalaga had a sin, Hanalahu and Yafsad. Whoever reaches that age, a certain age, that they have to start working. There comes a time we have to start working and putting up. Just like we say we do for things in this world. When we plan it for something and it's gonna cost a certain amount of money we make a whole diagram of what we need to do. I need to put away this amount for this amount of months in order to come out with this. It says that there comes a time when a person has to start planning. They have to do something. Because crops get to a certain point where they have to be cut and they have to be gathered. They can't just sit there. There's a point where you have to cut them down, you have to gather them. They're finished growing, that's it. They have to be picked or whatever the case is. He said, وَالَّذِي كَبُرْ وَالَّذِي كَبُرْ أَيْضًا دَنَتْ مَنِيَّةً In the people, whoever reaches old age, also the same thing applies. Nobody lives forever. Nobody lives forever. Then there comes a time when a person's going to die. It's not like just everybody just lives forever and people live to be a hundred. And over 100 years old, that's not real. It's not reality. It's not realistic. Just like the crops don't just keep growing and growing and growing. There comes a time when the crops have to be cut. There's a time when you have to do something. So he mentioned this to him to show them, as he says, in order to show them, He said he mentioned this to show that people can, should not be deceived. Don't get deceived and be tricked to thinking because you see somebody who lived a long time that you're going to live a long time. Because your aunt lived to be 90, uh, you think you're going to live to be 90. Because people in your family live to be old, don't be deceived and tricked in thinking that you're going to live to be as old as they are. He says that in the Kithira min al nas some people they see, they see maybe it's people that they've known for a long time, family members, good friends, and they live for a long extended period of time, longer than most people do. And they assume or they think that they're going to live that long. And this causes them to become lazy. So they start to procrastinate and they start to put things off because they think they think they have time based on what? Based on other people living longer. Based on other people living long or long uh, periods of time, they start to delay things and wait and I'm going to do it this, this time and they start putting things off and delaying things. He says, Kamaqil is a piece of poetry, as a poet said, and in this poetry, it basically says that Yu'amru wahidun fayaburru qawman That a person lives, somebody lives for a long time, so a whole group of people, a whole pack of people are deceived and they're tricked because one person lived for a long time. One person lives for a long time, so a bunch of people are deceived into thinking that they're going to live for a long time. He, said, he says, وَيُنْسَى وَيُنْسَى مَنْ يَمُوتُ مِنَ الشَّبَابِ Because that one person lived for a long time, people are deceived in their trip, and they forget about all the people that died when they were young. 
one person lives 400 years, but we forget about all of the people that died before they were 50. All the people that died before they reached 45. So we start to slacken up and slow down thinking that we're going to reach 80 and we're going to reach 90. They said, therefore, one person lives for a long time and it affects a bunch of people because a bunch of other people assume that they're going to live just as long as that other person lived, just as long as that other person lived. He says, so the Muslim, he uh, says, young Muslim, Muslim, and yakun haluhu kama jafil athar. He said, we have to live as the Prophet Sallallahu directed us in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi which is in Sahih Bukhari, where he said, Alayhi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِذَا أَنْسَيْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَظِرُ الصَّبَاءِ he said, if you go to sleep, then don't expect and don't wait to see the morning. Don't expect because you sleep at night that you're going to wake up and continue living. If you go to sleep at night, then don't think that you're going to reach the morning. And if you wake up in the morning, don't assume and don't think that you're going to reach the evening. As this is from uh, a deception. Deception that a person assumes, we assume we have time. We assume we got time uh, to get right, to correct ourselves. And in reality, all we have is the time that we're living in. He says, and he brings a statement from Ibn Joseph, Rahim Allah. يجب على من لا يدري متى يبغته الموت أن يكون مستعدا. It's obligatory for a person. A person has to, the one who doesn't know when they're going to die, they have to prepare for death. And none of us know when we're going to die, so it's upon every person to prep, to prepare for death. And then he said, And don't be deceived and tricked because with a young age or health, don't think that you won't die because you're young or because you're healthy. And we heard many cases when people say, and a person dies and they say he was in shape, or she was in shape, they were in good shape. They used to do this every three days a week. And they would do this three days a week that they were in good health. He says, don't be deceived by young age and good health. فَإِنَّ أَقَلَّ مَنْ يَمُوتُ الْأَشْيَاءِ وَأَكْثَرُ مَنْ يَمُوتُ الشِّبَّانِ He says, and if we think about it, he says, most people, most people that die are young. It's not that most people that die are old. Most people die are young. Most people that die are young. And if you look, as he says, as Sheikh Abdul Azad says, he said, if you look at your family, at a family, he said, if you look at a person's family, you're going to find the people that are old, the older people, that's the smaller group in the family. That's not the larger group. The smaller group of people, the smallest group of people are those who live long time, 80, 70, even 70, 80 years old. How many 80 year olds does each family have? Very few. Most, most, most people are younger. And he says, And most times when people die, usually most times when people die, they're in their younger years. Or either in, even in a younger, younger stages than that, even, uh, which is before puberty. People die, and they're young. They're in the state of youth, the Shabbat, where they're strong, and that Shabbat, that youth goes up to maybe 40 years old, some say longer than that. But most people that die, they're not 90-year-olds. They're not 80-year-olds. Yeah, they die also, but most times when people die, as he says, you'll find that most people die in that younger stage, and this is why he said, the Prophet Sallallahu said, don't, don't, if you go to sleep at night, don't assume 
that you're waking up. And when you go wake up in the morning, don't assume that you're going to see the night. And then he moves on to the next piece of advice. al wasiyah al sabia The seventh piece of advice. an qabus Maja'an Qabus ibn Abi Dhabyan Qala Qabus He said Sallayna yawmin khalfa Abi Dhabyan Salat al-Ula He said we pray behind Abi Dhabyan We pray behind Abi Dhabyan Salat al-Fajr We pray Salat al-Fajr And the shaykh that is Salat al-Fajr was Abi Dhabyan. He said, When Nahlu Shababun Kulluna Min Al Hay Illa Al Mu'adhin Fa Innu Shaykh. He said, And everybody was from the neighborhood. We were all young. We were all younger, except for the Mu'adhin. The Mu'adhin was a Shaykh. He was older. The Mu'adhin was older in age. And everybody else from the neighborhood, everybody else was younger. Falamma Sallam and Tafata Ilayna. ثم جعل يسأل الشباب من أنت من أنت. so after we finished praying, after he tasneed, he gave the salam, after the salat, he turned around and he started asking all of the younger, the younger men that were there, who are you and who are you and who are you. he's asking exactly who are you. he says فلما سألهم قال على وجه الحذف والتشجيع والتنشيط لهم. he said while he was asking them in order to encourage them, he said to them, إِنَّهُ لَمْ يُبْعَثْ نَبِيٌّ إِلَّا وَهُوَ شَابٌ He said that no messenger was sent, no prophet, no prophet was sent except that he was in his younger years. To show the importance of that, that time. No prophet was sent except that he was in his younger years. وَلَا يُؤْتَ الْعِلْمَ خَيْرٌ مِّنْهُ وَهُوَ شَابٌ he wasn't, there was no knowledge better than the knowledge of revelation or the knowledge of revelation that was given except that the prophet, those prophets were in their younger years and they were given the best knowledge that a person could be given. Knowledge of Allah Jalla wa'ala and of his sharia. So, showing the importance of, again, those years that what no prophet was sent except he was in his younger years. He was in his younger years. So he says he's نَبَّهَهُمْ عَلَىٰ اِقْتِنَامْ خَيْرِيَةِ الشَّبَابِ وَبَرَكَةً He's showing the importance of the importance of the younger years and the barakah the barakah, the blessings that are found in those younger years وَأَنَّهُ فُرْسَ عَظِيمَ لِتَزَوَّدْ and this is a time of uh, gaining, the time to gain and be busy with benefit. And that is the time when a person has most of their, a time when a person has most of their activity, most of their strength, most of their ability. He says that that al ما رواه إمام أحمد رحمه الله في كتابه الورق عن عبد الوهاب الثقفي عبد الوهاب الثقفي قال خرج علينا أيوب شيخ إنه أيوب أيوب is a famous أيوب أيوة أيوب السختيان أيوب السختيان if we don't know who Ayyub is, from the self, Ayyub al sakhtiyani He said, خرج علينا Ayyub. Ay al sakhtiyani Ayyub al sakhtiyani rahimahullah. He came out and he said, يا معشر الشباب احترفوا لا تحتاجون أن تأتوا أبواب هؤلاء وذكر من يقرأ. He said, O oh, youth, he said, Ihtarafu, which means, which means to take or to have some type of livelihood, to do some type of work, do some type of work. And then he said, you don't need to go 
so that you don't have to go to the doors of these people. And he mentioned some people that he wasn't too pleased with, so that you don't have to go to these people and ask them for help for finances and to stick your hand out and ask them for it. So the encouragement was to work and not to be the lower hand, as they say. So Sheikh Abdul Razak says, "A and yakun lishab ma tahsilhi lilain harfa yaktasibu biha malan wa rizqan yunfiqu bihi ala nafsihi wa fi ma ba'a ala ahli wa waladi." He said, "The encouragement here is along with because it's not a one-sided coin where we say we just sit around, we seek knowledge, and we don't we don't work." That the encouragement is, along with a person preparing for the hereafter, and along with a person gaining knowledge of Allah and His Messenger, Alayhi Salaam, he says that a person with that, that they have a hirtha, they have some type of job, some type of trade, something they can do to gain money, to make money, so that they can support themselves. And so that they can support, if need be, uh, their family. So that they can support their family. So the man can support his family. He says, even if necessary, yet, if they have children, they can support his children also. He says, So that a person is not a burden on somebody else. So that you don't have to depend on other people. The encouragement is to not just learn and not just prepare for the hereafter. And this goes along with the other narration of uh, taking your portion of the dunya. It doesn't mean that we can't work and we shouldn't work and we shouldn't make money and we shouldn't have nice things, but there's a balance. And this narration goes with the other narration. This narration goes with the other narration. As he says, have some type of job, have something where you can support yourself so that you don't have to uh, depend on other people. He says, حتى لا يحتاج إذا كبر أن يذهب إلى فلان أو إلى فلان لطلب المعاونة والمساعدة. So that when a person gets older, when a person gets older, they don't have to depend on people. They don't have to go to people, ask them for help. And this is the benefit of working. It's the benefit of working that a person is independent. And they don't have to depend on people, especially when they get to a point where they're not able to. He says, He said, in the best type of income, the best type of income, the best type of money that a person can make is that a person is not given, it's not given to them, but that it is made from their own hands, that they put their own, their own work in, they put work in, and they make the money from their own hands. This is the best type of work. He says after that, Al-Wasiyyah, al the ninth piece of advice, Min Wasaya Salaf the shabab from the advice of the Salaf to the youth, Ma ja'an Ja'far, qala, kana thabit al-bunani, rahimahullah, Thabit al-Bunani. Thabit al-Bunani is his name, rahimahullah. Yakhruju ilayna. Wa qad jalasna fil qibla. Fayaqoom. He said, Thabit al-Bunani. Uh, he came out and we were sitting facing the qibla. We were sitting there, we were facing the qibla. He says, so he turned and he said to us, يا معشر الشباب حلتم بيني وبين ربي أن أسجد له وكان قد حببت إليه الصلاة He said to him He said you came between me you came between me worshiping or making sujood to my Lord he loved to pray, as it says. He loved to pray. So he would pray a lot. Of course, outside of of course, outside of the five obligatory prayers, he would pray sunnah or voluntary prayers a lot. So he came and he said, 
basically you distracted me from praying. You are distracting me from praying. Sheikh Abdul Razak says, Yushir Rahim Allah, La Anna Ba'd al Shabab al Ladina Yattakuna, Fa Yishtami'una fi Masjid, Fa Yistagaluna al Fursa Liqa'ihim bi Asdiqa'ihim fi Masjid, Bila Hadith al Janibiya. Sometimes people come to the Masjid, brothers or sisters, and they use the Masjid as a place for side talk, as a place for side conversation to the point as he says and while they're using it for side conversation some the person sitting next to him or somebody else is there to worship they came to worship they came to the message to focus they came to the message to focus they came to the message because maybe at home it's too much going on so they can't focus like that. So they come to the masjid. They come to the masjid. And other people come between them worshiping because they're having side conversations, they're talking too loud, or whatever the case may be. He says, so when people like this, when they behave like this, number one, they didn't come to the masjid to worship. They didn't come to worship. They came to meet somebody, which is fine, no problem. They came to meet somebody. But now they carry on a conversation, not just meeting somebody, but distracting somebody else who came to worship. So he says, number one, they didn't come to worship. And number two, they're distracting the person who did come to worship. They're distracting the person who did come to worship. He said, this is why that it's important to, and this comes under the chapter of advice. He says, it's important for the youth as far as advice, mora'at, that we have to explain to each other, especially to the youth, that the sacredness of the message, what is the message for? What is the message for? What do people come here to do? So that we don't have these type of problems. The Allah So that people don't come to the message and then they're busy in the message with side things that distract them from worshiping or side strings, side conversations that distract another person from worshiping. And in this narration, the man came to worship and he couldn't focus because other people came, but they didn't come for worship. They came for something else. And the fact that they came for something else wasn't the problem, but the fact is they distracted the people who did come to worship. They weren't worshiping and they didn't allow other people to worship as they were distracting the other people that were there to worship. So he says last, and we'll stop here. He says, what are we gonna say about this day and age? This day and age when it's a bunch of uh, distractions that we find now, not just people talking, but he says now that you find uh, put the different ringers that distract people. People come and they don't put the phone on sign. So people are praying and then along the sign it might be whatever it is. Outside of a regular ringer, it might be a song on it. It might be something from a movie. It could be anything that people come and then they distract people who came to worship. Or the phone rings and the person answers the phone. The whole, the whole conversation. No other been the message, no lowering of the voice, just carrying on like a person is out on the street. And he says all of these things, These are all things that distract the person in their worship and their salat. And it removes the sakina, it removes the relaxation, the focus that a person is trying to have while they're praying. And we'll stop there, inshallah. And we'll continue next week with
the 10th piece of advice, and that possibly next week, possibly may be the last class. Uh, maybe not. Mungkin. We'll stop there.